John, back here at Rock West. Today I want to demonstrate just a simple at-home project you can do for yourself, taking Rock West tubes and turning them into ski poles or a walking stick or something like that. You can make anything from alpine ski poles to cross-country ski poles or walking sticks. I purchased some parts online. This is just a tip for a walking pole. This is a grip for either a walking pole or uh, cross-country skis. And then here I've got a grip for alpine skis, downhill skis, the tip and the basket. And these were all purchased online fairly inexpensive so kind of a fun project that you can do for yourself what we'll be doing first is taking these two tubes and they already fit together nicely they telescope we'll be bonding about three inches in here after that's bonded then we can cut them to the length the user that they want and after that we can bond on the tips and then the handles actually just drive on after it's finished. So that's what we'll be doing first. We'll be showing how to prep the tubes for bonding. We need to prep the inside of this big tube, prep the outside, and then after we get them cut to length, we can prep the end here to accept this. This is a little bit snug, so we're gonna have to sand a little bit off of here to get a good bond line. We've got all of our equipment. We'll start from there. So the first thing we're gonna do is tape off an area about three inches long. Um, if you want to do more than that, you can, but three inches is probably adequate for something this diameter. So I'm just going to tape off three inches and then I'm going to sand that area and get it clean. Okay, so I'm going to put some gloves on, keep the carbon dust off of me, off of my hands. Also lets me use the isopropyl alcohol to clean it without getting it on my hands. This is a 180 grit sandpaper and we are just going to scuff this surface. But I just want to make sure that we take off any shine or any contaminants that we might have here. Another thing that we can do to help is to put some scratch marks in the axial direction to give us a little bit more bite when we bond it. And we'll just clean that off. Any contaminants that we have can affect the bond strength. So we wanna make sure it's nice and clean. Now we do the tricky one. So this one, we need to prepare the inside surface. And these tubes are made on a smooth metal mandrel. And so the inside hasn't been sanded and it's quite smooth. So to get a good bond, we actually need to scratch the inside of that as far as we can. And one of the tricks I like to do, I'll take a piece of sandpaper like this. I'll actually wrap it around a Sharpie put it inside and that way I can use the Sharpie to put some pressure on it. When I'm done, then I'll take the whole thing and I'll do an axial sweep as well. And that should be good enough. And if you look inside, you can see that it's now got a dull surface instead of a shiny surface. And twist it around. Okay, so that's all scuffed and cleaned. One thing that I'm going to do on this set is we have a nice square corner on this. So when we have that bonded in place, you have a step there. And that step can be sharp, it can catch on things, so we don't want it to split the ends. So I'm actually gonna take this and sand a bevel or a chamfer onto this end so that when it bonds on there, there's less of a step there. So. It sands really easy. We're just gonna take this. If you kinda cup your sandpaper like this, it won't sand a flat on it. It will actually sand more of the radius around it. And then I just rotate. That looks really good. It's nice and clean. We still got a good fit. So let's mix our adhesive and put that together. So I've just got uh, our typical Loctite uh, EAE 120HP. It's sold on our website. We just squirt out a little bit. And then we just mix it together. We're just gonna cover this lightly. We always wanna make sure that we cover most of the surface with adhesive so that there aren't any dry spots that aren't bonded. And you notice I'm not going all the way to the bottom 
and that's simply because as I push these two parts together, it's going to push adhesive down towards the bottom and it will cover those parts. And then we also want to put some adhesive on the inside of this one. So that should be enough adhesive. I'll wipe any extra on that inside surface. Slide them together. You can see that the adhesive is beating up in front. If you go slow, that adhesive will actually flow down onto the lower surface and I'll rotate my piece so that it doesn't, gravity doesn't take it all to the bottom. And we've taken it down to the tape and it stopped. Cleanup is important. If we don't clean it up, that's the way it's going to dry and that's kind of ugly. We want to make sure everything looks good. So I'm just going to take my stir stick that I used to mix the adhesive and I'm just going to wipe off as much as I can. I want to make sure there's a good bead in there, but I want to wipe off all the extra and we're just going to carefully clean that up. Remove the tape because if we leave the tape on there, it could bond to the adhesive right there on that seam. Wipe it one more time. Or you can actually see where the resin is a little bit shiny right there. So we need to wipe that a little bit more if we want it absolutely clean. So you will get some what we call hydraulic action. If we were to set this on the end, that part would slide into it. So now we need to set it down on a flat surface so that it will actually cure just like that. So I'm just going to set it behind me on a table and let it cure like that. And that part is basically finished. So the next step will, will be after that's cured in uh, between 8 and 24 hours, we can come in and we can cut them to length and then we can start bonding on prepping the other surfaces, bonding the tip on and then getting it sized for the actual user. The part has been bonded, so you get a nice bond line there, it looks nice. Also took the liberty to measure and cut it to size, so this is the part we cut off. So we cut this end off because this is a little bit less stiff than this and so we want to make the pull uh, a little bit less flexible, so we cut off the skinny part. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mask off a little section down here where this goes on and then we'll have to do some sanding, some prep work, so that this will fit on, and then we'll bond it in place. So we're just gonna set this, and that'll just tell us where we sand and where we don't sand. So we're gonna take some coarse sandpaper to do this. Um, we need to be kind of aggressive, it'll give it a nice bite to it, and it will take the material off that we need. So we can do a couple of different methods where we sand it back and forth. But what we're really trying to do is to make sure that we get a consistent sanding all the way around so that we don't take off one side and not the other. So I'm constantly rotating it. The other thing we can do is wrap the sandpaper around it and just rotate it back and forth. So the tubes are not quite the diameter that we need so we have to actually take some material off. We can see that there's still a little bit more that needs to come off. So we'll keep sanding that until we get to where it fits on there. It can be a little bit snug because when we put adhesive on there it will actually lubricate it and it will slide right on and bond quite nicely. So we'll continue sanding until that fits on there. There we go, it's perfect. So we need to scuff up this little piece a little bit just to make sure that we have enough and I'll use the same technique I did last time. Wrap a piece of sandpaper around uh, a dowel or in this case a sharpie and just scuff up the inside a little bit. And that's nice and clean just to make sure. And that's nice and clean. Got them all cleaned, 
We cleaned off the inside, we cleaned off the ends. Now we're gonna mix some adhesive, glue them together, and then we can let them sit overnight. We'll do some cleanup too, obviously. We gotta get enough adhesive for all of these parts, so this should be plenty. Mixing glue. Yes, it's so satisfying to touch. I'm going to take a skinny stick and I'm going to put some adhesive on the inside of this one first just so that we get all the surfaces covered. We'll put a little bit of adhesive on the end of the stick here. Take this piece now. Make sure we get everything. Now we ought to make sure to take off the tape right now, otherwise it will bond right to that adhesive. It's nice all the way around there. And we're just gonna set the rag on there, spin it. Clean as a whistle. Now I am gonna set it on the floor, straight up and down like this so that the pressure puts the pole right down into the hole so that it uh, cures like that. I also want to show you the walking pole version. This one uses a different tip on it. The ski tip has a place to put baskets on it. The walking tip is just the tip. So we're just going to bond that on there and that's the end of it. We've got the tip bonded on, it's clean, looks really nice, this bond line. So our next step, we're actually going to add some uh, graphics to it. First we're going to clean it really good, make sure there's no resin from the adhesive on here, make sure there's no oil from our hands, and we're just going to give this a really good scrubbing because we want it to look really nice when we're done. So you can see that we got quite a bit of dust off of there, even though these are really clean. We'll give it a good look to make sure that there's not any shiny spots. If there are shiny spots, we might have to come back in with some Scotch-Brite or even some sandpaper. Top tube looks good, except we have one spot right here that's got some shiny on it. So I'm gonna take just a little piece of sandpaper Give it a good cleaning. And now that looks really good. Now we are going to locate where our graphic goes. And the end of this, the reason why I have it marked out is because when we put our grip on here, we want to make sure that the graphic is below the grip and it, do, and it doesn't interfere with the grip. And we want both poles to be the same distance. So, and I'm just gonna line these up. This is a two-part um, vinyl sticker. So then we just lay that down hot in the center. Now I do want this to stick down really well and forever. So what I'm going to do now is I'll use some of this compression tape. It's actually the same tape that we use to make our tubes in our roll wrap machine. You can put some really high tension on it and get some good compaction on there. And I'll just wrap it around it. But I just put this around here so that I can get some really good tension on that surface and get all the edges stuck down really good. And this isn't necessary. This is just something I feel will help preserve the graphic. The next step, we'll actually take a heat gun and shrink this tape a little bit further and that will give us even a little bit more compaction. It will also set the adhesive underneath the vinyl. This is a 300 Fahrenheit degree heat gun. The key is you always want to keep your part moving because you don't want to bake it. So this is shrunken and cooled, so now we're going to take this shrink tape off. And then we'll clean it again, just to make sure we haven't contaminated it. Now this vinyl sticker has that secondary piece on it that we wanna make, make sure we take that off. So you can see how well the heat really helps 
keep everything in place. Especially these little tiny fragile points. Beautiful. Make sure it's super clean and doesn't have any fingerprints on it. Oil for my hands while I was working on it. You'll notice I was avoiding running the alcohol over the graphic because I don't want to run the risk of getting solvent under the adhesive. I've got a stick here that will allow me to set this up on an angle so it doesn't touch the ground. The tip is touching here and then this will be off there while I coat it with the ceramic. So we're going to use these lint-free paper towels to apply it. We just put it on as a wet coat. It's really nice and easy. You can spray it on with an airbrush or a spray gun, but you can also wipe it on. The fumes are pretty strong, so you should do it in a well-ventilated area. This is a product by Cerakote. We don't sell it, but we do use it on our parts occasionally to get to some different finishes. And in this case, it just makes it really shine and it, it really brings out the beauty of the carbon fiber. So I will put two coats on. Um, I will wait 15 minutes. I will actually rub this off with a cotton rag and then I'll apply another coat just exactly like I did here and then let that sit for 24 hours. And you can use clear coat if you want or you can just leave them the way they are. You can do whatever you want. This is uh, my preference at the moment. That's it, we'll let that sit for 24 hours. We've got the Cerakote on here. You can see how shiny it makes it. It looks really beautiful. It's really slippery. It's, it's waterproof, so the water will beat off of it. So it, it, I think it just makes it look really nice. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do with ski poles, we have a really bad tendency to smash up the bottom of the ski pole with the edge of the skis. So we're gonna protect it with this shrink tubing. This is three quarter inch clear shrink tubing and it has a two to one shrink ratio. And we're gonna put that down here on the bottom and that's gonna give us a nice rubber edge that the uh, edge of the ski won't be able to bite through. So you have to work it from one end to the other if you want it to go down without any air bubbles in it. As you can see, it's a pretty slick process. Really simple. Our next step is to put the handle on the end and then we can put the basket on. One of the nice features of this coating is it's kind of slippery, so it actually aids in getting these grips on. And that's it, the grip is on. It's a nice grip, feels really good basket. Even simpler, it's a screw-on basket. Take that, basket's on. This pole is finished. Also made this walking pole, so there's actually two different things. We've got the ski pole with the basket, and then we've got this walking pole that just has the tip and a cross-country ski handle for walking. If you want to make your own poles, it can be pretty simple. We can list all the materials that we used in the description. So until next time, build something.